The opening scene features an eight-year-old boy named Christian LaRue, who has a dream of becoming the best football player in the world and making it into the national team. He's a big fan of Cristiano Ronaldo and aspires to be just like him. Christian's mother, Kathleen, supports him and believes that he must learn to walk before he can jump, so she encourages him to first prove himself to the coach. His father, George, is in the U.S. Army and is currently on duty fighting a war in Afghanistan. Later, we are introduced to a cringe-inducing neighbor named Frank, who frequently hits on Kathleen. His two sons, Donald and Ed, attend the same football practice club as Christian, so he helps the boy with pickup and drop-off. Christian is dominated by his sons, who believe he will never be able to match their levels. One day, their coach Dominic gives Christian a chance by making him the new striker of the team. However, the lad is unable to impress the coach, as he does not score a single goal. He returns home sad and confides in his mother, who reminds him of his father's words. George used to encourage him with a motivated quote, Never give up, for it brings success, and that is the best revenge. Later at home, Christian is practicing penalty kicks when he accidentally kicks the ball to another neighbor's property, destroying his plants. Enraged, the elderly neighbor walks out and chastises him for damaging his lovely plants. The boy apologizes and expresses his desire to be the best football player in the world. However, the man, who despises football, tells Christian to keep the ball and his dream away from him. In the next scene, we see Dominic's football team, Northern Stars, competing in a tournament, while the children's parents cheer them on from the audience. Just like always, Frank does not want Christian to play, and as a result, he persuades Dominic to keep him as a substitute. In the first half, their team performs awfully, causing the coach to become stressed. During halftime, he reminds them to use the triangle strategy and short passes to move forward and score. He also tries to motivate the team prior to the start of the second half. Regardless, the team fails to perform well. As the playtime is coming to an end, Dominic decides to replace Donald with Christian. To everyone's surprise, he plays very well but is still unable to score. Fortunately, their team gets a penalty, which they score and tie the game at 1-1. After the game ends and all the kids leave, the coach commends Christian on his performance saying that he played like a champ. On the other hand, we see George and his army force in action. They appear to be surrounded by the enemies, and to make matters worse, their commander is severely injured. The soldiers are slowly losing hope, but George continues to look after his comrades, assuring them that he will not leave anyone behind. In the midst of all this, he looks at a picture of his wife and son, which causes him to become emotional. The next morning, as Kathleen is driving back home after dropping her son off at school, she receives a call. It is Sergeant William Scott, who reveals that her husband is MIA, missing in action. Shocked at the sudden news, Kathleen gets distracted and ends up crashing her car. Later that evening, Christian, who's waiting for his mom at school, is picked up by Frank, who drives him straight to the hospital. The boy is heartbroken to see his mother is in a critical condition. With no one to look after Christian, he is left with Frank until his mother recovers. Unfortunately, he's treated very poorly. He's forced to live in an abandoned basement and even made to do all the household work. One day, Frank notices Christian in need of new football boots, so he takes him to a sports store. But before the store owner showcases the best options, Frank makes it clear that Christian is not his son and thus he wants the cheapest shoes available. Following this, the store owner brings him a pair of strange-looking golden color shoes. Despite this, the boy does not complain and contentedly accepts what he gets. One day, Christian is practicing alone wearing the same worn-out shoes. He is taken aback when he finds himself shooting the ball like a pro. At the hospital, Kathleen is fortunate to be under the supervision of a caring and generous nurse named Mary White. Aside from taking care of Kathleen, she also encourages her to be strong for her child, claiming that a mother's strength is the only way to lift a child's spirit. A few days later, the Northern Stars is having another game, and if they manage to win it, they'll be able to compete in the tournament's finals. This means they will have a chance to compete in the regional state championship games. 
However, when the first half ends, the team is unable to perform. With time running out, Dominic decides to replace Frank's son with Christian for the next half. When Frank hears this, he objects vehemently and tries to persuade the coach to reconsider his decision. But Dominic is well aware of what he's doing. With no other choice, Frank plays the dirty game by blackmailing the coach into returning the money that he seems to have lent in the past. But despite this, Dominic refuses and allows Christian to play. Dominic's decision proves to be a game changer, as Christian scores goals one after the other. Everyone is impressed by his incredible performance, including the coach, who whispers, I found my striker. After the game, Christian's only friend, Julian, who's the goalkeeper of Northern Stars, compliments him on his performance and encourages him to stay strong for his mother. But Frank, who is envious of the boy, makes him do the dishes, prevents him from seeing his mother, and even forbids him from calling her. After a few games, Christian's skills start to blossom, and he leads his team to numerous victories, much to the delight of his coach, who has felt like a loser his entire life, but now feels like a winner thanks to the little boy. Gradually, the boy's incredible game catches the attention of news reporters, and his picture is published in the newspaper. At the hospital, Mary shows the newspaper to Kathleen, who is very proud of her son. She then attempts to contact him, but a jealous Frank ignores her call. A night before the final tournament match, Dominic calls a member of the national team scout named Mitch and asks him to spare some time to watch Christian's match. In the finals, Christian performs beyond expectations, leading the team to victory and impressing Mitch, exactly as the coach predicted. As days pass, Christian's popularity continues to rise, and Kathleen watches him on television, making her very happy. She's also emotional because she wishes George could see their son's performance. In contrast, Frank is dissatisfied with the boy's success and devises a plan to bring him down. One day, Christian is practicing alone when he wonders if his ability has improved only because of the golden shoes. So, to test it, he practices penalty kicks wearing both his available pairs. Surprisingly, he shoots perfectly with the golden shoes, while all his shots from the normal pair are awkward. Frank, who is eavesdropping in, discovers the secret and intends to take away his golden shoes. He tries to convince Christian by offering him a new pair and even tries to steal them while he's sleeping, but his efforts are futile. Despite all this, Christian is a good-hearted kid who prays for his parents, his team, and even Frank's well-being. Soon, the regional state championship games begin, and Christian, with his amazing skills, leads the team to numerous victories, eventually taking the team to the finals for the very first time. The extraordinary performance elevates the boy's profile, propelling him to the front pages of newspapers and magazines. However, Frank does not change and he continues to dominate the boy with his cold demeanor. One day, Kathleen calls Frank to inquire about her son's well-being, but despite the fact that Christian is right in front of him, he refuses to let the two speak. Elsewhere, Christian's popularity reaches the door of the U.S. president, who is informed about the boy's and his parents' current situation. After hearing all of this, the president decides to support the boy and holds a press conference in which he shares Christian's heartfelt story. He also mentions that he will do whatever he can to find Christian's father and bring him back, so that he can see Christian play in the upcoming championship game. At the same time, Mary gives Kathleen a pep talk about how she needs to get on her crutches and get to her son's game. Not long after, she's visited by the president's secretary, who informs her of the president's support to her son. In the next scene, we see an additional group of army forces sent in search of their lost soldiers. Fortunately, they're able to locate the MIAs and safely board them home. Afterwards, the president holds another press conference to share the good news of the MIAs rescue and their safety. He also announces the names of the MIAs, one of whom is George LaRue. Kathleen, who is watching the news on television, is ecstatic. The president believes that this is a heroic story, and if it does not inspire a nation, he does not know what will. Upon saying this much, he walks out saying he has a football game to catch. On the day of the regional state championship finals, 
Christian gets ready. But as he's about to walk out of his basement room, he learns that he's been locked inside by Frank, who has also stolen the golden shoes. Thankfully, the football-hating neighbor's dog arouses his owner, who comes over to see what all the fuss is about. Through the basement window's glass, he asks Christian why he should help him, and the boy writes a note saying, because you are my angel. This touches the man's heart, so he immediately breaks the window glass and pulls Christian out. After realizing that he's late for his soccer game, the man decides to drive him to the stadium in his vintage car. But before getting into the car, Christian notices several football awards in his garage and wonders how he won them despite his dislike of the game. Having been busted, the man reveals that he was very good at football when he was of young age, but one unlucky day, he was involved in an accident that fractured both his foot and his back, forcing him to give up everything. Despite this, he had moved on with his life until one day, Christian started practicing next door, and now he's fallen in love with the beautiful game for one more time. After a brief conversation, the two rush towards the match. Meanwhile, Dominic asks Frank about Christian, but he lies that the boy is ill and that he will not be able to make it. Hence, the game begins without Christian, and the team is understandably weaker. Shortly after, Christian finally makes it to the game, but he's missing his golden shoes, which causes him to doubt himself. When the coach finds out, he gives him a pep talk, telling him that he doesn't need those shoes to play, and that all he needs to do is believe in himself. The boy then enters the game, and keeping Dominic's words in mind, he manages to score his first goal, boosting his confidence. In the final minutes, he strikes an impressive goal just like his idol Cristiano Ronaldo did, and leads his team to victory. Right then, Kathleen arrives at the stadium, and as she hobbles inside on crutches, she's approached by George from behind. After an emotional reunion, the couple walks inside to watch their son lift the trophy. After the match, the family finally reunites, and when Frank tries to intervene, Kathleen punches him in the face and tells her husband that she will explain later. A few moments later, Mitch approaches them and offers Christian a spot on the international team. The movie ends with the winning team lifting the trophy.